you know, I'm always writing new stuff. I'm actually working on a, mu- a musical at the moment, actually. Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> so, so maybe next year or the year after, um, that'll probably hit the stage. Wow. But it, it's about my life and growing up as a showbiz kid and yeah. um, my policeman dad and my yodeling mum yeah. and all sorts of stuff. So I'm an ideas person. There's always <laughs> something on the go. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 7 of 30 Minute Call, proudly presented by the Canberra Theatre Centre, produced on the lands of the Ngunnawal Nation. We pay our respects to the traditional custodians of this land and their elders past, present and emerging. Hi, I'm Joe Gleeson and today I have the incredible Melinda Schneider as my guest. She's an Australian country music singer and songwriter, a multi-award winner, a mum and just so, so, so much more. After starting from a young age and now racking up 40 years of being in the business of entertainment, she's showing no signs of slowing down. She's lovely, she's tough, and she's a super talent. Melinda Schneider, this is your 30 Minute Call. All right, ladies and gentlemen, she's on the phone, fresh from school drop off. Melinda Schneider, hello. Hello, I'm in my active wear. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I've become a school mum and a soccer mum. It's so weird. Your little man, uh, Sullivan, he, he's what, about eight or somewhere around there? He's, yeah, he's almost eight. Almost he's eight. eight in uh, August. So, yes, it's a beautiful age. I'm loving every minute of it. It's um, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, last night I was uh, looking around and doing a, a bit of research before our chat, and of course that video of you and Sully on national live television with him yelling out boobies every couple of seconds uh, popped up. What a great moment in television history! Oh uh, look, he was breastfed for a few years. He did love his boobies, <laughs> um, but that was funny. I didn't have a babysitter, yeah. and. Uh, he was in the green room and he was a bit clingy. He was like, oh, I don't want to stay here on my own. And I thought, oh, look, I'll just bring him on. I, I'm very careful about exposing him publicly. You yeah. know, I don't do it because I was raised that way from a very early age to be on TV and on stage. And I just don't really agree with it. Yeah, right. Um, you know, I think they should be able to make their own choices in their own minds up later in their lives, you know, well, when they're capable of making that decision, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this day I just didn't have a babysitter and I just thought, oh, look, it's pretty harmless. He'll, just, he'll probably just sit there quietly. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he was loving it. He was loving it. And David, so was David and Sonia. Whenever I go back on the show, the first thing they say is, how's boobies going? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Melinda, we do have you on today to uh, talk about A Farewell to Doris. Now, it is coming to the Canberra Theatre Centre on April 23, 2021. Of course, we had the original dates all locked in. You had your original tour dates probably all locked in and ready to go. And then a little thing called COVID-19 came along and you had to do a a whole bunch of tour rescheduling. That must have been a bit of fun for you. Oh, yeah. Look, it was I'm lucky I've got a wonderful agent, Mark, Mm. who does all of that stuff for me. He's incredible. Um, But, yeah, it was within 24 hours. I'd I'd really lost the whole year's income, which has never happened to me in my life before. Wow. How was that sort of emotionally for you as well? Oh, look, I mean, you can't go into into victim mode or anything like that because everyone else is in the same boat. Yeah. it was kind of easier to bear knowing that everyone was affected. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was just a shock, I suppose, you know, um, and being self-employed, you know, it's a, a tough, um, it's a tough business we're in. So, uh, but on the upside, I was about a month into the tour already and I was already pretty run down because it, it had been a, a big four weeks of traveling into state every weekend and doing three shows a weekend and driving wow. for four or five hours between towns and doing a two hour show each night. Sometimes I had to take Sullivan with me and so I was juggling motherhood and wow. being an artist 
at the same time out on the road. And so it's exhausting stuff. Yeah. You know, I was really tired. So um, I kind of embraced the rest. Yeah. And I'm, I'm still loving that part of it that I don't have to travel anywhere. Yeah. I can just enjoy being home. Guilt free. Well, that's right. Exactly. Mm. And I'm a bit of a workaholic. So it's it's been... I'm trying to break that cycle within myself yep. of having to feel like I have to achieve, achieve, achieve all the time. Yeah. I find it very hard to switch off. Yeah, right. Um, and I think that's a, a symptom of being self-employed as well. You've got to initiate all of your own opportunities and mm-hmm. your own luck. And um, so it can become a, a bad habit of not being able to switch off and just enjoy the moment, you know? Yeah, right. It feels like sometimes, uh, speaking to more and more people as this goes along, that this was almost the forced break that they needed. Um, it's come along at a yeah. good time for some people where they've gone, you know what, gosh, if this hadn't happened, I was heading for a burnout anyway. Yeah, well, that happened to me a couple of years ago. I had a, a massive burnout. Wow. Um, and so... Yeah, I've, I've I've had a bit of a struggle with that stuff for a couple of years. So, yeah, right. it, yeah look, I was quite happy to have this time off. Not that we want, you know, a horrible virus to come along no. and, and threaten people's lives yeah. in order to be able to do it. But I, I love the fact that the world has has stopped. Yeah. You know, I, I have been feeling stop the world, I want to get off for mm. years. Yeah, wow. So, yeah, it's... It, sort of what I wished for really in a way yeah well let's um let's have a look at this this show I mean like you say you got to do a bit of the show before um before you were forced into this this break the show is a tribute to Doris Day it is called a farewell to Doris because she sadly passed away last year um she did last May yeah yeah. very sad 97 years young yeah and what an amazing life and amazing legacy you know yeah um she really survived so many things. She outlived all of all of four husbands. Yep. Um, outlived all of the co-stars, and you know, for the last twenty or thirty years, she had a, a really lovely, peaceful life, which was probably the life she really desired deep down. Was the sort of white picket fence with her beautiful animals and yeah. living um, in Carmel next to her dog friendly friendly hotel yeah yeah um, she was a bit of a trailblazer so a, with that as well wasn't she yeah she was so she had a really beautiful peaceful um you know twilight years of, of her life which is great as well as doing all of the incredible things that she did for the the, the first you know 30 or so years yeah because she seemed to just get to a point where she went i think that's enough for me i'm stepping away from all this glitz and glamour and i'm just going to do what i want to do and yeah, she's really yeah. interesting. Yeah, I totally get that. She she went through a lot in her life, you know. Mm. Um, so I think she absolutely deserved that. So yeah. look, I, I feel really blessed to have been able to do my shows about Doris. Really, for the last ten years, on and off, I've been touring uh, my big theatre show, which I've brought down to you. A couple of times yep. um, called Doris so much more than the girl next door. Yep, that was you know with the, the costumes and the sets and the two dancing boys and yeah. all of that, um, which was great fun. Then I did another show regionally called uh, Melinda Does Doris, where mm-hmm. I just took a little trio out and did that, and um, and then another show with Tom Burlington called Young at Heart, where he did Frank and I did Doris, and we swapped songs, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, we didn't cool. bring that to Canberra, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so now a farewell to Doris, you know, that was the natural progression mm. to really celebrate her incredible life. It's, I mean, like you say, you've been singing her songs for a long time. From what I've read, she was an idol of yours from a very young age. When you heard about her passing last year, how did that affect you? Was that an unusual experience? Well, look, I knew it was coming. Yeah. She was 97, you know, you can't live forever. No. I knew, knew it would happen, but it was a tough month because I lost a, another really close mate of mine, a wonderful entertainer um, called Jerry Gallagher, who I've known since I was a little girl, right. about a week before. Then Doris died. Then I, I lost my old flatmate to suicide oh, a couple wow. of weeks after that. 
So I had three, you know, big losses in that that month of May, mm. which was a terrible time for, for for me. It was just a really big time of grief, you know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it was last year wasn't an easy year, really, in a lot of ways. Yeah, um, that sounds really tough. But then I had to, you know, get myself together and and start touring. A farewell to Doris in September, which was beautiful because I got to go and, and perform with twenty piece orchestras. Wow! Yeah, um, cool. Or in the capital cities. Um, so yeah, it was great. You, you never so got. I've, a, I've been enjoying it. That's good. You never got a chance to meet her, did you? I never got a chance to meet her. No, right. she was. She didn't really meet that many new people. Yeah. Right. Um, the odds of me getting to meet her would have been a bit slim. Yeah. But I was in touch with her manager a lot. He was lovely and really helpful. And, um, you know, I sent her the original script to my first show right. to make sure that she was happy with it. And she came back saying that she was happy with the way we portrayed her. And Great. So it was good to get the thumbs up, her thumbs up for that. Well, that's cool. So as a kid, um, why Doris? I mean, I've, I've sort of look at, you know, the time that you, when you were growing up, you should have been, you know, idolising people like, I don't know, Pat Benatar and Diana Ross and Abba and Eurythmics and even, you know, Olivia Newton-John, but Doris Day, where did that oh, come Oh, definitely in? all of those as well. Yeah, right. <laughs> Olivia, I loved Olivia. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, Olivia kind of was sort of the, the contemporary kind of Doris Day, I guess, that mm. girl next door thing again, yep. that image. Um but yeah, look, I loved Calamity Jane. It was that film yeah, right. that switched me on to her. Yeah. And um, I just loved her character in that. She was so funny and she was a, a tomboy and, mm. um, you know, a great singer, dancer, actress. Everything about that role I loved. And then she ended up as the blushing bride at the end of the, the film. So it just, I just thought she was everything a woman could be, really. Yeah. Do you see a bit of yourself in Doris Day? Yeah, for sure. Look, I think, you know, my um, my nature is generally, you know, or has been generally a really happy one and I'm always smiling and certainly my public image is this kind of girl next door and yeah. always a smile on my face. Yep. Um, and I was raised to be a good girl and a nice girl, you know. So from that point of view, I think, you know, definitely um, that 1950s morality was yeah. is there, has been instilled in me by my uh, older parents, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I can relate to her a lot, but I can also relate to the darker side of Doris and the, the side that she went through with her four tumultuous marriages and her, her choosing controlling men again and again and, yeah. and stuff like that because I also went through that period of my life, which right. was really horrible um so i can relate to her on many levels actually yeah because uh, yeah she seemed to get a bit sick of that good girl image sort of you know midway through her life and when i i need to get away from this yeah but she actually had the opportunity to really get away with it away from it um with some roles that she was offered like she was offered to play um this is Robertson in The Graduate, Robinson. Right, right. Um, and she turned that down. She thought the role was too saucy oh. and wouldn't really, people wouldn't like her playing that because of that beautiful image that she had. So it's interesting the choices that she made, you know. Um, oh, yeah. I guess even in the, the the Doris Day TV show, she was still, um, you know, always seen as a nice person. And even in Pillow Talk, she was still... She was an independent career woman, but she was certainly, you know, still a nice girl. Yeah. Um, so I think she was quite careful about the way she managed that persona. I didn't realise that when she was signed up to do the Doris Day TV show, uh, she only found out about that after her husband passed away, that she'd actually been signed yeah. up to do that TV show. I mean, could you... That's wild. Yeah, he was a bit of a rat. That yeah. was her third husband, Marty Melcher, who was her manager. Yeah. So he did all sorts of things without telling her. He was very underhanded. Um, and he'd even 
spent that advance that she got for that Doris Day TV show without her knowing as oh well. Oh, God. Um, and signed her up for five years to do it. And, yeah, she just came across the contract on his desk, um, <sighs> you know, a few days after he died. And she'd also just found out that he'd bank- bankrupted her. Yeah. So she really did have so many things to overcome. Wild. Two years ago, Melinda, you recorded a song at the time of the Me Too movement. It was in full swing and you donated the proceeds to help fund safe workplace programs. How was that experience for you as a as an artist? Oh, look, it was good. You know, these things are really things that I'm passionate about. And as a woman, I, I think the Me Too movement has, has been incredibly powerful and positive. Mm. Um, it's been a struggle and difficult as well, but... You know, it, it's so overdue and yeah. I've experienced, you know, workplace sexual harassment, um, probably more so over in Nashville than I have here um, in, in songwriting sessions and things like that over yeah, there. Right. Um, so, yeah, I found myself in a couple of really scary situations that I was able to, you know, you don't know what you're going to do until you're in those situations, no. whether it's fight or flight and I, I fought with this particular one that I was in mm. um, and put the person in his place uh, but yeah it's it's really really difficult to know how you'll handle it until it happens to you but I think it's fantastic that people are speaking out and using their voices and um, in all sorts of ways you know women have, have been silenced for so so long on this subject and it's mm. way overdue. In your show, uh, you do sing a bunch of uh, Doris Day songs, obviously, but one thing that I think you should be applauded for that maybe you don't get enough applause for is the fact that you were able to pick the songs in the first place. Last night I read that Doris has recorded uh, 650 songs <laughs> between 1947 yeah. and 1967. That's outrageous. So many songs, and yeah. So which ones do you choose? I think yeah. we've got twenty, about twenty-five songs in the show, and wow. of course you, you pick the best, the best ones, the ones that people love the yeah. most, and yeah. um, biggest hits, and ones from specific shows that that people love as well, specific musicals. So, uh, but I love them all. I love singing them. I, I never tire of singing them. They're just beautifully written songs. Yeah, I've I had a bit of an idea. So you've been doing some home concerts during coronavirus. They look like a lot of fun. You've got a great setup um, for the home oh, concerts. Oh, thanks. They look really Yeah, cool. we've been doing a few streamed gigs from our lounge room. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's great. It is great fun. I think people are, are not quite used to purchasing a ticket to watch something online. No. They, they have a, a sense that everything should be free. Um, yeah. So, you know, trying to educate people on that. Um, is a probably a long road, but I've had some very loyal fans who you know keep buying tickets to each one I do. So oh, that's, that's fantastic. Great. That's really great. It yeah. is, and yeah, I think you'll you'll uh, you're probably a bit of a trailblazer in that way of educating, like you say, people to say this is an art form that is you know it doesn't it doesn't just come free or I'm like you should be you should be happy to part ways with a bit of cash and open up the wallet um, just because it's on your computer screen um, or your TV screen um, doesn't mean it's just going to come through to you for free so yeah good on you that's great um, oh thanks yeah and I you know I want to create work for my band as well you know they're, yeah. they're hit as, as hard as artists are um, so you know anything I can do to create work for them too yeah. is um, makes me feel good well, I did have, like I said, I had another idea for you, a COVID-19 idea that you could you could stream. Um, before your tour starts in September, I had an idea that you could do Melinda Does Doris Marathon, where you do all 650 of her songs back to oh, back to back hell. to back, right? And I did some, <laughs> did some calculations, some rough calculations. I reckon it'll take you about about a day and a half. Um, but that's without wow. any sleep, food, drink, or wee breaks. I think it'd just be wow. great to watch, Melinda. Are you on board? It'd be great to watch it. Just put a bucket in front of me. <laughs> um, 
you cry. <laughs> That's hysterical. You can get to tune in and watch you slowly lose your mind over, you know, almost two days. It'll be brilliant. That's actually a really good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that too many other people will be on board to do it with you. Maybe the band could take it in shifts and take it in turns to, you know. Oh, God, I know what lack of sleep's like. (laughs) You know, getting up four times a night to breastfeed, that was bad enough. Oh, God. (laughs) Well, you know, it's it's an idea. Keep it on the table. How many songs have you recorded? I mean, uh, you've got plenty of runs on the board, but 650 seems like an exorbitant number. Well, you'd be, what, up to, what, 150, 200 maybe? Yeah, probably a couple of hundred. I haven't counted them. No, you, I, <laughs> really? you wouldn't have. Yeah. No. It's a lot. Um, it's a lot. You're also, yeah. Speaking of being busy and sleep deprived, and you know, not being able to keep still, people may not know that you're the the CEO and founder of your own record company, Empower Records. What does that mean? What does the, the owner of a record company do? Well, I just launched that this year. Yeah, um, right. I was going to launch it later in the year, and I thought, oh, hey, why not just do it now? You know, get the message out there that I'm I'm really independent, and uh, you know, I, I've always for the last ten years I have been um, an independent artist, but I wanted to launch this new label because I'm just doing things in a bit of a different way, right? Um, and taking my power back in the sense that. Uh, I'm letting go of, you know, uh, old paradigms or ways of doing things yep. that I've sort of been taught to do in the music industry. Things are changing so rapidly. Um, it's not necessarily about albums anymore. It's not, you know, not always about even charting. I'm just kind of trying to see things from a bigger picture where yeah. if I want to release release a song because I think it's something that you know people need to hear for healing reasons or anything I just I can just put it out there whenever I want great um being independent you know I don't have to ask my record label's permission I don't have to you know get a whole team on board with with something that I want to do I can just do whatever I want when I want to do it that's and, cool and uh it's very freeing mm. so yeah, so that's what I'm doing. And I'm in the middle of recording my new album at the moment, which ah. will probably be out early next year, I think. Oh, brilliant. How cool. Yeah. So, yeah. so does that mean, um, you know, as well as obviously recording your own stuff and having that freedom, does that mean that you can also sort of be a, a bit of a talent scout and see other artists and go, hey, come on to my label? Is that a thing that is interesting to you? Yeah, look, I could, absolutely. Um, I wouldn't rule anything out. Um, it's just all well, the funding side of it, uh, of the albums, when, I guess when you're an independent artist, you know, you don't have a major label um, throwing money at projects. So yeah. you have to be a lot more careful about the way you fund them and, and things like that. And the artists I chose would have to be as hard working as I am, right? <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm, there's a lot of great talent out there, and I'm always interested in in what other people are doing and and uh, nurturing young talent for sure. Yeah, awesome. And how's the how's the new album coming along? Are you you got plenty of songs lined up, ready to rock and roll? I have, yeah, lots of songs. Um, I haven't had an original album out for ten years. Oh wow. I've been dancing and I've been um, <laughs> doing another project, Great Women of Country, with Becky Cole. Yeah. Um, and I've also had a, a best of album out. So I've had a lot of other yep. kinds of projects that I've been focusing on. Mm-hmm. And I became a mum too. So, yeah, you know, that was in I, there. Yeah. Kind of just changed my focus a little bit um, yeah. and had a little break from my original stuff for a while, which was good. Uh, but I'm ready to get back into it again now. Yeah. Um, so I've got lots of songs, heaps of songs to choose from. Too many. Oh, really? Is that is that hard for you? Is having too many and having to cull them down? Would you rather be in a, in another position where you're like, oh, I've got freedom to write a couple more now? Yeah, we've well, always got that. You know, <laughs> I guess it's about the right combination of songs. Yeah, right. On an album, so. Um, you know, I'm always writing new stuff. I'm actually working on a, a musical at the moment, actually. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, for, 
for maybe next year or the year after. Um, that'll probably hit the stage. Wow. But it's, it's about my life and growing up as a showbiz kid and yeah. um, my policeman dad and my yodeling mum yeah. and all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, that's a, a full-on project as well. Very exciting. So I'm God. looking forward to that. I, I'm an ideas person. There's always <laughs> something on the go. Yeah, well, that's amazing. Gosh. Um, thank God homeschooling's all done and dusted then, my God. Oh, tell me about it. That nearly <laughs> killed me. That, uh, yeah, that was hard. I mean, I, I didn't have, you know, 14,000 projects going on like you do, but I even found that difficult sort of working from home and had the kids and, you know, you got usually people have got a little sort of side passion project or something that they'd like to squeeze in as well. But, geez, that was, that was tough, wasn't it? Really tough. Yeah, really tough. And we're not trained to be teachers. No. No. You know, so the first week I put so much pressure on myself to, 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 of course, do it all perfectly. Yeah. And it, that lasted about a week. Then I just <laughs> went, you know what? <laughs> I'm just going to do reading, maths and art. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds very familiar. We went pretty hard for the first yeah, yeah, sort of week and we had this schedule and we're like, we've got to try and stick to this. And and then, yeah, so by the last week, it was it was pretty loose. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, Melinda, thank you so much for uh, having a chat to us. Um, I hope you don't work yourself too hard and, and um, try and enjoy a little bit of quiet time every now and then. Oh, thank you. Yeah, balance. Try and strive for balance. <laughs> yeah. uh, make sure you get along and see uh, a farewell to Doris, uh, starring the one and only Melinda Schneider. She's on tour from September 2020. Uh, all the dates are up on her on her website, um, and she's here at CTC on April 23, 2021. If you love Doris Day, you'll love it. If you love Melinda Schneider, you'll love it. If you love Melinda and Doris, you'll probably just start speaking in tongues and have some kind of transcendent experience it'll be amazing for you (laughs) melinda schneider thanks so much for taking the time to have a chat to me really appreciate it thank you for having me see you soon